Hey everyone, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com and today is Z490 preview day. So I've got a few boards from Gigabyte, Aorus. Let's take a look at them. Let's do this. The Virtuoso RGB Wireless SE headset from Corsair. With a sleek premium lightweight design, comfortable memory foam ear cups and subtle RGB lighting, it doesn't look like your typical gaming headset. With a detachable broadcast grade microphone, patented slipstream wireless technology and tuned 50mm neodymium premium drivers, it's simply the best headset Corsair have ever created. Find out more by clicking the link in the description below. So as I mentioned, today is Z490 preview day, so there's going to be no benchmarks or results here. I just wanted to go through kind of my first impressions of the three boards that Gigabyte have sent us. If you want to check out our MSI and ASUS coverage, we do have separate videos for them, so definitely go and check that out on the channel. So I guess really we've got different price points here. We've got kind of the, the modest to sort of lower end. We've got something sort of mid-range, the master, probably one of my favourite ranges in the Gigabyte kind of lineup. And then we've got the all-out crazy Aorus Extreme. So let's start from the lower, lower end and move our way towards the Aorus Extreme, starting with the Pro AX. So starting with the Pro AX, I guess this is kind of a new lineup. Generally, they've had the Pro, the Pro Wi-Fi. This is the Pro AX, which straight away tells us that it has AX Wi-Fi. Other features on the board are a little bit weird. I've got to admit, I was not expecting PCIe Gen 4 on a board like this, but just even looking at first impressions of kind of the rear of the box, it states that it is PCIe 4.0 ready. So it has a PCIe 4.0 turbo B clock, PCIe 4.0 slots, and is a PCIe 4.0 ready PCB. Now, the only thing that worries me about a board like this, having PCI Express 4.0, is the heat. As we know, with X570, they had to slap on fans on every single board, apart from the Aorus Extreme, which somehow did it with mass amounts of armor over it. But I'm, I am really, really worried about that when it comes to it. But we're not gonna see that for a little while because based on the rumor mill, the new processors or the refreshed Comet Lake S processors aren't actually going to have PCIe uh, 4.0 readiness or functionality. So let's talk about what we do have here today though. We do have a 12 plus one phase design. We do have, I guess, ample cooling around the CPU socket. We have the Fins Array heatsink that Gigabyte really sort of, you know, like to shout about because it does give extra surface area compared to a normal heatsink. We do have an eight and a four pin giving us power directly to that CPU, which as we know, again, based on the rumor mill, I have to be very, very careful about what I say here. Potentially these new CPUs, these Comet Lake S, uh, the refreshes, are going to have extra cores on there and the thermal uh, TDP has actually been raised a little bit so I am expecting them to get a little bit sort of on the warm side so we are going to need ample cooling there. In terms of memory we do have four slots and they do have armour shielding on it just like uh, two out of the three X16 PCI Express slots. Of course having three it does support uh, SLI as well as Crossfire but in my personal opinion I do believe multi GPU setups are a little bit on the well the dead side of things shall we say. M.2 wise, we do have plenty going on there as well. We have an, a kind of open bare one, which is a, a little bit weird, while the others are actually situated underneath this heatsink block. In terms of RGB, there's not a great deal on here by the looks of it. We're gonna have a little strip here, and then we're gonna have a little bit lighting up just where the kind of audio area is. We have plenty of storage options with six SATA ports. We have USB 3.2. Uh, we have a, gen, uh, a type C connector. We have our Wi-Fi AX. We have a type C on the rear. We have HDMI on the rear as well. We have plenty of standard USB, and we also have 2.5G ethernet. So connectivity wise, pretty much everything you'd expect. Now, pricing, I haven't been given any pricing. I guess I could hazard a guess at what kind of price point this is gonna come in at. I reckon it's going to be anywhere from about 279 pounds up to about 330 pounds. Same in dollars, same in euros. So there's that. I guess really we should move on to probably my favorite, I guess, lineup of board in the Gigabyte range, which is uh, the Z490 Aorus Master. I've always actually liked the Aorus Master range of boards. It hits that sweet spot of giving you extreme sort of functionality and features, a lovely, and I mean lovely looking design for a pretty sweet price point. Talking about price point, I think this is gonna be about 379 pounds, just straight off the bat. And there's plenty of reasons why. Firstly, it is gorgeous. I'm sorry, but I actually think this is probably one of the best looking boards that's ever been created. Now looking, speaking about cool, cooling, Looking around the CPU socket, it looks like we have a 14 phase design, but uh, 
according to some of the literature, it does seem like they are um, sort of doubled from seven phases using uh, current balancing. So it's going to be interesting to see how it performs. Hopefully, you know, it's going to provide enough juice to the CPU so that it can run these new CPUs that Intel are bringing out as well as potentially overclock them as well. In terms of providing juice to the CPU, we do have two 8-pin EPS connectors, both of which have shielding around them, as well as what Gigabyte claim to be like the solid pin design. So you do get the very best contact to your power supply. We've got exactly the same on the 24 pin with these solid pins and the shielding around there. More shielding around the DDR4 uh, memory module slots, as well as the PCI Express slots on all three of them. So again, we can do SLI, we can do Crossfire if you so wish. There's basically half of the board taken up by this huge, huge heatsink area, which once you take it off, it does reveal your M.2 slots. And again, just like the Pro AX board, this does have PCI Express Gen 4 support. So that's for your X16 as well as your M.2, obviously subject to the CPU that you're gonna be using in it, which based on the rumor mill, it's not gonna be the ones that are gonna be coming out soon. And we're potentially gonna have to wait until Rocket Lake. We do have Gen C, uh, Type-C connectors on here as well. We do have USB 3.2. It's pretty much got every feature you could really want. It's got a power button and a debug LED if you are using this on a test bench. It's got plenty of USB and fan headers down the bottom. We've got BIOS switches. We've got pretty much everything you could want for what I'm hoping is gonna be, just like the Master normally is when we look at Z390 and other chipsets, a pretty damn affordable board considering what you get. Speaking of boards, I guess that have a lot of features, it's time to move on to the Aorus Extreme. But I can tell you now, that's not gonna be cheap in the slightest. Let's do it. So moving on to probably, it's gonna be one of the most expensive Z490 boards out there, but frankly, I don't care. But saying that, I do know that they are gonna be coming out with a Z490 Aorus Extreme Water Force board. And we are gonna get one, we are gonna do a build in it, it's gonna look absolutely monumentally just insane. But, I haven't got this one out of the box purely because I actually wanted to show you the box. And I think this is where a lot of like pricing and stuff like that comes down. Even the handle just looks premium. The box itself is nice and thick and just look at the way that it opens. Sort of like this, and like this. It has some weird slogans on this board. I'm gonna sort of get that straight off the bat. Team up, fight on. Not even sure what that's about. But this board is just glorious. But before I even get to the board, I want to talk through some of the accessories and just the way that they're laid out. And this is why you're going to pay mega money for this. I mean, just look at that. That shouts premium. You've got your RGB Fusion 2.0 stuff. You've got your USB cables. You've got your Wi-Fi. You've got manuals and stuff. You've got essential USB DAC. It actually has a DAC. You get all your little stickers and stuff as well for anyone wondering. But just little things like that. I'm, I'm happy with that. that. That just looks absolutely amazing. So let's get the board out and see exactly what that's about. So before I even got this board out, I did say that I thought the Master was probably the best looking Z490 board out there. Yeah, then this came along. Oh, I mean, look at it. Just look at it. I, I think it's all the shielding and stuff on it. It is just, and you know, don't tell my missus, but it is a sexy, sexy board. Uh, it really is. Most of it is taken up by kind of shielding and armor and stuff like that. I mean, literally the whole back of it is basically encased in this armor which kind of looks like it molds round the edge of the board. It's just absolutely just, wow. I defy you to find me a better looking board out there. I mean, the MSI Godlike board is nice, but it's, sorry, it's not a patch on this in terms of style and design. But sometimes style and design isn't kind of everything, right? We need to look at functionality. We need to look at features and things like that. So CPU socket, there's quite a lot of kind of open area, even though the board is encased quite a lot. The CPU socket is pretty open. I think it's gonna need that because it's got 16 phases and they are 90 amps uh, each as well. We do have the Fins Array heat stack with a very, very large heat pipe connecting into this one here, which kind of is covered and encompassed in this rear IO shield. We do have armor plating on the memory. We have exactly the same on the three PCI Express X16 slots, which again, are PCIe Gen 4.0, depending on the CPU that you use with it. So they are ready. It's just a matter of waiting for them Rocket Lake CPUs. Giving power to the CPU, we have two eight pins with, again, the kind of armored shielding around there. It does have the straight pins on there as well, the solid pins, uh, however Gigabyte are actually branding them. The thing that I like about the Extreme board the most has got to come down to the, let's call it the IO, let's call it the front IO. So just looking down here, everything is where you'd expect it to be. And it's facing sort of this way, it's parallel with the board. 
if you look at it like that, instead of sticking up on the board. So cable management is gonna be a breeze. We have all these fan headers, we have our 24 pin, we have uh, USB connectors, LED connectors, front panel connectors, SATA, USB, uh, addressable RGB, normal RGB. We've pretty much got everything there. And then we have a few other things, front panel audio and a BIOS switch. It's actually hidden. Take it off and it reveals it down there, just like we've seen on other Aorus Extreme boards in the past. In terms of function functionality, I mean, it's pretty much got everything. We've got 2.5G Ethernet. We've got 10GBE as well. We have Wi-Fi AX. We have the, every USB you could imagine. You have Thunderbolt 3 dual ports. It's got absolutely everything. It's not gonna be cheap. I'd hazard a guess to compete with the likes of uh, MSI with their godlike motherboard. Just like we saw on X570, I think you're talking 750 to 800 pounds, dollars, euros, no matter where you are in the world. As we move up to the water force, I think you're gonna be looking closer to that 1000 mark, no matter where you are in the world. This though is just beautiful. And I think, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it. So there we have it. Three boards, three potentially different price points. Obviously these two are gonna be a little bit closer. This you're gonna to have to sell a kidney for, I'm gonna be honest, but just look at it. It's got every feature you could want, imagine, need. It's got the looks and the style and everything to go with it. Honestly speaking, I've got to put my sensible head on and think if I wanted Z490, based on sort of all the rumors that are going around at the moment, because I'm acting like you guys, I don't know anything other than rumors at the moment until it comes to full on test day where we will have all the benchmarks on these boards. I'd prob probably be inclined to be looking somewhere around this kind of markup. Do I really need, I guess, the extra features and the style of the master? If not, will the Pro AX just give me everything that I need? Obviously there is the other scale. You could go down the AMD route instead. But if you want to stick with Intel, you want the latest Intel, you want Z490, just based on looks alone and sort of pricing out the way, I'd probably go for the master. But I don't care about pricing. This is the one for me. <laughs> Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Would you go for the AX, Pro AX? Would you go for the Master? Or would you go for this? Let me know, you know, if money was an option and if money wasn't an option. I'm sure if it wasn't an option, everyone would be going for this. And I defy anyone out there to find me a better looking board than this as well. There you go, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know exactly what to do. And be sure to check out our other videos for Z490, where we have a bunch of MSI boards and also a bunch of Zeus boards. And I will see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.